Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin is a new hardcore action RPG. Releasing on March 18th on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and on PC via the Epic Game Store. The gameplay in this video is taken from the PlayStation 5 version of the game, and thanks to Square Enix who are sponsoring today's video, I can give you an overview of the full version of the game to help you decide if it's worth playing. So if you like what you see, click the link in the description to learn more. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin is an alternate retelling of the first Final Fantasy game. It tells the story of the Warriors of Light who are on a journey to defeat Chaos and bring the Light of the Crystals back to the Kingdom of Cornelia, which has been conquered by the Darkness. At the start of the game, you're thrown into the story with little explanation as to why you're there or what has happened. It will most likely seem pretty confusing at first, but this is intentional. Early on, the game rewards people that are curious, so exploring the areas and reading any lore that you come across is highly recommended, because it does explain a lot that may not be obvious at first glance. The areas in the game are inspired by locations that can be found in previous Final Fantasy games. You don't need to have played any of the other Final Fantasy games to understand what's happening in this one, but longtime fans will notice a few easter eggs and nods to the previous games in the series. The areas in the game are filled with hazards to overcome and challenging enemies to defeat, and you'll also need to solve simple puzzles and unlock shortcuts to make travelling through the areas more manageable. The hazards can come in various forms and sometimes they can catch you off guard, so just because you can hide behind a pillar, it doesn't necessarily mean it's safe to do so. Enemies can deal a lot of damage to you, but you have 5 potions that can be used to heal Jack or revive party members if they go down, and you may be able to find more when defeating enemies but it is possible to fully recover your health and MP and replenish your initial 5 potions each time you use a cube, which pretty much function as the checkpoints within a mission. But the trade-off for using a cube is that it will respawn previously defeated enemies in the area, so you'll need to see how far you can push yourself without returning to any previously visited cubes that could slow down your progress through the mission. But even if you end up dying, there doesn't seem to be a severe punishment. However, you will be transported back to the last cube you came into contact with during the mission, and most of the previously defeated enemies will respawn, and the equipment that you never managed to pick up off the ground will be lost. But if you can make it back to the location where you died, you can recover a portion of the MP that you lost while dying. If you feel like things are a bit too hard, or if you want some additional challenge, you can adjust the game's difficulty settings. And if you want to take things to the extreme, you can remove your party members and play solo. The job system is a core gameplay and customization system that can be found in many Final Fantasy games, and it's also present in Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. While playing as Jack, you can unlock a variety of different jobs that cater to different playstyles, but you can pick two jobs at the same time to use while in combat. The two jobs you select can be quickly switched between with the press of a button at any time during missions, even when you're in the middle of a combo, so finding interesting job combinations will help you overcome challenges in the game, and will give you a better chance of overpowering tougher enemies. As you continue to use a job, it will level up and earn job points that can be spent to unlock new abilities for use in combat, or passive abilities to boost your stats. All jobs have specific weapon types that they can equip, and they also have a job-specific action that reinforces that job's identity. For example, the White Mage job action lets them use White Magic and gives them access to the Raid spell to resurrect downed party members. The Black Mage's job action allows them to use Black Magic and gives them access to the Flare spell that deals massive damage to enemies in an area. And the Marauder can use the upheaval charged attack to deal lots of striking damage to an enemy, while also applying a debuff that reduces how much damage it can deal. Each job can also use combo abilities based on the weapon type that's currently equipped. These combo actions can be assigned to various button combinations, and they will activate after the specified inputs have been used. And Jack can also equip command abilities that have been unlocked in the job tree. These abilities give Jack various buffs, debuffs, attacks and evasion skills that can help in combat. Many of the abilities you use consume MP, but the way the MP system in this game works is different compared to other Final Fantasy games. To start off with, Jack has 200 MP, but his MP can be increased in combat by using specific actions that force him to get up close with the enemies. All party members and enemies have a break gauge that will leave them vulnerable when it's depleted. Attacking enemies will reduce their break gauge, but if you manage to completely deplete it, the enemy will be broken, indicating that a soul burst can be performed. 
Apart from in major boss fights, performing a soul burst will kill an enemy instantly, even if it has some health left. So a good strategy is to focus on using soul bursts, since it has various beneficial effects. The main one being that it will recover some of Jack's MP and increase his maximum MP, allowing him to use more abilities during combat. Performing a soul burst can also knock back and reduce the break gauge of nearby enemies, and it will also cause a chain reaction and soul burst any other enemies that happen to be broken nearby. Jack's break gauge can also be consumed to perform a soul shield, which when successful will recover MP and also raise his maximum MP. In addition to evading or blocking with a shield or weapon, pressing the soul shield button will parry enemy attacks and stagger them, leaving them open to a counterattack. It's also possible to absorb purple named abilities that hit the soul shield and then store it as an instant ability to use later. These instant abilities don't consume MP to use, but they have a limited amount of uses before they need to be absorbed again. But you need to be prepared to avoid any enemy attacks that have a red aura and a red name, since these can't be blocked with a weapon or soul shield and they usually deal a lot of damage. So it's best to just get out of the way of the attack to stay safe. The combat in this game doesn't punish you too much for failing, but it will punish you if you don't take the enemy seriously. The combat is fast paced and the enemy placements and combat situations you're placed in can make things challenging. The gameplay forces you to be aggressive since you need to attack to restore MP for abilities or use soul bursts or soul shields in order to increase your maximum MP. Being passive and trying to keep away from all danger may put you into even more trouble when you come across a tough enemy. So even if you're playing as a magic focused job, you're still expected to get in close to the action. To help you survive, you can equip new weapons and armor that are dropped by defeated enemies, found in treasure chests or earned as mission rewards. The equipment drops in various rarities and each bit of equipment that you find will have various passive bonuses attached to it. Some weapons can even be found with combo abilities built in which can be assigned to your job's combos while the weapon is equipped, even if you haven't learned the specific combo ability in the job tree. The equipment that you find can come with job affinity bonuses. These bonuses give your currently assigned jobs additional abilities and stats from other jobs based on the amount of affinity that is on the equipment that is currently being used. It's possible to have affinity for multiple jobs which will transfer a portion of the EXP earned in combat to them. So you'll have to decide which jobs have affinity bonuses that benefit your currently equipped jobs and focus on finding equipment that raises the affinity for those jobs. Thankfully, you can lock and store equipment that you want to keep in the warehouse. And from the preset menu, you can edit or save your battle sets so you can switch to them easily later. It's also possible to see which missions drop equipment with a specific affinity, so that will make finding the affinities you want to aim for easier. The party members you have are pretty reliable and their equipment and jobs can also be customized. But unlike Jack who has access to everything, each party member has a select set of jobs that they can use, with a few more that can be unlocked in side missions as you progress through the game. But you also have the option to play through the missions with other players instead of the computer controlled party members in the online multiplayer mode. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin takes a different approach compared to other Final Fantasy games. It's challenging, but it still manages to provide options for players unfamiliar with action games and gives advanced players enough flexibility with builds to give them the opportunity to overcome challenges through their own experimentation and creativity. The combat has been very smooth on the PlayStation 5 and in performance mode it appeared to maintain a constant 60fps. But I did notice the quality of the cutscenes were a mixed bag. During cutscenes the frame rate did seem to be lower than what you'd experience in gameplay and there were times where even the PS5 was struggling to keep the frame rate stable during the cutscenes in performance mode. This didn't take anything away from my overall enjoyment of the game but it was noticeable and distracting and it's something you should be aware of. The story may seem to make no sense at first but keep going since there is more to be seen. So the people that go out of their way to seek information will be rewarded and they'll find a deeper meaning in a lot of the things that they see within the story. For those of you that are interested in the game but haven't tried it out yet, there is a demo version currently available on PlayStation and Xbox consoles and any progress made in the demo will carry over into the full game. So to try the game out for yourself and to see if it's something you'd enjoy, click the link in the description to learn more. I know I'll be playing Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin for a while since there's a lot to experiment with and the enemies are fun to fight against. So if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be the first to know when they're available. 
But in the meantime, here are some other videos that you may be interested in watching. I'll be making some new videos very soon. But until I make those videos, I'll see you all later.